All right, market update here on the 14th. So this will be kind of a tutorial slash all index. I'm going to go over the technicals and all of them. As I pointed out in the video on Friday that I did, uh, right after the market closed or like later in the evening, we finished above the 50 DMA. We also finished in demand and we completed a pattern. Um, I was looking at this again. Um, either way, it could also be this. Just to go over it real quick. Could be this. So that would make this the B wave right here. Instead of this being ABC, I actually kind of like that better. Um, I think that makes more sense. So anyway, again, above the 50 DMA, in demand, and we completed a pattern either way. Um, the pattern would have been completed here is ABC, and we gap up for a C wave higher. So the whole thing will look, again, like this. So where can that go to? Where would this hit? We're in demand, we're bouncing out of demand, we're above the 50 DMA. Since this is an A wave, and we'll say this is a B wave for now, take my Fib tool, put it down here. Um, a running flat would go to the 0.61 Fib. So I'm looking at the minimum target for this gap up. If we do get a gap up, would be 517.9. The max target is going to be the 1.61 Fib. So it can go anywhere from there all the way up here to 529.2. That's all valid. So we don't know right now, obviously, where it's going to go. But next step is figuring out where our supply zones and where our gap fills. So pretty obvious. You see a supply zone right here. Pretty simple. Uh, there should be a gap up here too. I don't know where it's at. Yeah, see there's a gap right here. So the minimum target's right here. The gap is right here. I'll put that in red. So um, now we're just looking at where it can go. We bought in down here in demand. We're above 50 DMA. We're ready to bounce now. Now we got to figure out where we're going to sell at. If I'm looking at this chart, the most obvious sell point is going to be in the supply zone. Then you can take and go down on lower time frames. You have the four hour right here within that supply zone. You have the one hour right here. You have the two hour down here. Um, figure out where exactly the gap was on smaller time frames. It's actually up here. So five about 5200 is where I want to sell at just based on this. So you have to be careful though because sometimes when you have a supply zone like this, it will just come up here and just tap it and it won't go all the way to the gap fill um, because on the four hour, the gap is at the bottom of this basically. So it could just come up here and tap that. Uh, but again, we know the minimum target is here at 517.9. So it's probably going to go past that. And if it goes past that, it's probably going to go over here to 5200. But that's just where you're never going to be perfect. Um, so again, I'm looking for this going into Tuesday. I'm looking for something like that. Probably into Tuesday. And then that's where I'm going to want to take profit because I think that would make be the end of this B wave. So I think this is actually going to look like a B on Tuesday and then maybe come back down here later into OPEX back down to this um, demand zone again. And then I think that might be the end of the A wave. We'll see. I'm projecting now, so I don't know for sure, but I really do think there's a good chance we do break the 50 DMA um, sometime within the next month. And if that were to happen, you're looking at another bounce like this and then another move down here um, in May like that. So I think we're still in the B wave of this um, A wave overall. So we could see a move up and then another move down later in the week. So it might be some crazy price action um, later in the week. But again, I'm looking for a minimum of right here at this box. If I sell there, that's when I want to start buying puts then. So now I want to buy puts in this box. 
and uh, let's just say I buy puts here and I'm wrong and it goes above these, I'll probably cut my losses right here. But that's where you look at the waves. I'm looking for five waves. So I can follow the waves into this box, buy puts, and then profit down to here. So if you're trading, this is very helpful. This is a very simple strategy. You're using the 20, the 50, the 200 on the daily time frame. You're using supply demand and you're using Elliott Wave all combined. So obviously I'm bullish and I'm looking for this box um, by Tuesday. So that is SPX. Let's go over NDX. I haven't charted this one, so I can just start fresh. Um, we finished at 18,000. At 17,978 was the 50, so we're above that. Same thing. Um, on the daily, I don't see any supply zones here, but we do have this demand zone again, right here. And look where it's hit. It's hit there now six times into this demand zone and finished above the 50. I'm not sure if it finished it above it here, but right here it did for sure. So now we got to figure out where the supply zone is. And I don't see any on the four hour. I think it's the two hour might have one. So on the NASDAQ, you have to go all the way down to the two hour time frame to find the supply zone. There you go. So I'm looking for a move up on the NASDAQ up here to a minimum of 18,185, maximum 18,341. If it were to break above this, then there's no supply zones above it. Um, but we can bring in the 20 and the 200. So if it hits this box, it's going to be above the 20 again. That's going to be majorly bullish. And then that's where it comes in, Elliott Wave, to figure out where it's going to go. Um, this doesn't really look like a very bullish overall pattern, though. It looks like an ABC move to me. So I would probably look at this the same as um, as SPX. You're probably looking at something like, you know, up here, and then we come down farther afterwards. Um, but it could finish right here, too. Really, um, on the Elliott Wave side, it's a lot more complicated. So if you're just like, don't know what you're doing with Elliott Wave, then you can just focus on supply, demand, and moving averages. But that's pretty much what I got on the NASDAQ. Pretty choppy move right here, and we should be going up higher to at least this box. So you could be gaining 1%, basically. One, maybe one or two percent. But if you have calls on Friday, that'll be a pretty nice gain. So that's what I'm looking for in the NASDAQ short term. We'll see what happens when it hits this box. Let's go over the Russell. Uh, let's see. Get rid of this. And I haven't done these in a while, so it'll just take me a second to figure out where everything's at. So the Russell is the only one it looks like. Russell is the only one that finished below the 50 and the 20. So it's the most bearish of the three. Um, let's just go ahead and hop into it and see what we got as far as supply and demand. We finished below this. This is not a valid demand zone anymore. So where are we looking at? We're probably looking right. Yeah, we're looking right here. This is the demand zone. That we're looking at. So we finished inside this box. Did we? Basically, we finished inside that box. And... Um, I'm looking for a bounce out of that box, but you do have the 50 right here at 
2044 and you have the 20 above that. So with it being below the 50, it's probably going to be a little bit more bearish than the other ones. Let me see if this actually, this is not a demand or a supply zone. So we're looking at, and there's a gap up here. Should be a gap. No, there's no gap. Okay. So just looking at this, I would say I'd be aiming for first off, I would be aiming for this right here. I didn't see anything on the daily. So the next four hour is right here. So you're looking for this box right here as your first resistance at 2040 to 2048. That's where I'd be looking for. If it were to break above that and break above the 50, then we're looking up here at 2069 and um, probably maybe even up here. I don't think that daily was very valid. Let's see. Yeah, it came down a little bit too much. So these are the two boxes I'd be looking for. Um, just short term. We should be getting a bounce here on the Russell up to at least 2040. Break above the 50 and above 2048, and you're probably headed to the 20. Um, it might not break the 20, but if it does, you're heading up here to 2083, 2091. Um, Elliott wave-wise... This is where it comes in key. You have to know where it's at in the chart as well. This is obviously a very corrective move. And we can also look at the weekly, I guess, too. It's above all the moving averages on the weekly. So that's pretty bullish. Um, but overall, I would say this is probably going to go. This is probably coming down here. It looks like a flat to me or an expanded flat. I think we're probably going to do something like that because this is a very corrective move. I think sometime in May, we're going to be down here. So it's probably going to break below this, maybe come down here and test the 200 on the daily here at 1913. That would be my target for the Russell. And you can see down here again, look at this. You have a, Demand zone down here too, right where the 200's at. So I would be looking down here eventually, but it might. And look at that too. The 1.61 fib takes us to 190. So I think we're probably in the middle. Are starting to B wave or on SPX? It might be short shorter time frame, but you're looking at something like this. Actually, you're probably looking at something like this. This has got to be a impulse move. So you might be looking at something like this. Potentially, and then this would be like that. So pretty, um, I would say I'm aiming for 2000 40 and 2048 be the most likely scenario so that doesn't give you that much upside on this but still it's a nice little bounce to start off the week um, and then we're probably going to start heading down even more down here to the 200 dma so that is the update on the indexes i'm going to go over the dollar real quick and just see what it's doing so the dollar came all the way up here to 106.08. It broke through this supply zone. Um, let's just draw a... So it held this parallel line. It doesn't look like at the moment that this is going to be a five-way move, but it very it, it's looking more and more like it is going to be. And maybe that's going to be enough for um, 
the sell-off into May. So again, if you watch the videos of the past, there's two different possibilities here. This is a very bullish pattern. I mean, a bearish pattern overall. It is not bullish. Um, and so I'm looking for an overall either A, B up here, C down here, or A, we've already completed B, and we're starting a C wave down. And then this is one, two, three, four, five, like that. But if it goes up here, then this is a five wave move. And we're currently in a third wave. So one, two, three, four, five, like that. So it just needs to break above 107.37 to validate this move higher for a C wave of B before the next move down. But if it holds it, we could be starting a uh, wave three here soon. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of insight into the process of um, setting up a trade, knowing when to go long, when to go short, supply demand, moving averages. And then the trickiest part is obviously Elliott wave, especially on the indexes, kind of hard on smaller time frames. But if you get a general idea of which way it's going, then you can start looking at moving averages and supply and demand and figure out where it's most likely going to go. So I'll leave it at that. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you understand what I'm talking about. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I will catch you tomorrow with another update. Have a good night.